The destruction and the colonization of our resources, our land, our water can no longer continue. It's a survival issue for us as indigenous peoples because um, we have no place to go. So we're looking at a green alternative which has been inherent in our culture. It's inherent in our prayers. It's inherent in how we see the future and how we see the land. Right now we have a choice to make it a difference. We all know that uranium is, is not safe and you know coal uh, making energy is, is not clean. My grandfather, you know, he died of uh, cancer caused by uranium. We cannot ignore the devastation that we have caused on not just our communities, but other communities throughout the world that have bared the brunt of fossil fuel development. To see the families that I work with that have been affected by uranium, coal, oil, and gas, it's devastating that not only their health is impacted, but the land they live on, the water they drink. We haven't learned how to put away uranium after it has burned up. And even when we are extracting uranium, that still is going to contaminate our Mother Earth. Same way with coal. You know, we're destroying our Mother Earth while we're digging coal, while we're burning coal. We are, you know, making pollution. The life cycle of coal has resulted in health impacts on our communities relating to asthma and respiratory illnesses. The promise of solar creates the opportunity for um, looking at a new way of generating electricity that is not going to deplete our water, that is not going to have a human health toll on our people, that is going to be in line with our traditional values as Navajo. We need the Navajo Nation, the new administration to wake up now and not shut the door on the future generation because we have a lot of children and grandchildren that need a future. We formed to protect our only source of groundwater that was being used as a slurry to transport coal from Black Mesa to a power generating station in Laughlin, Nevada. About 4,700 acre feet of water per year to transport this coal that provide electricity for the entire Southwest. Cities like Los Angeles, Las Vegas, a lot of Arizona um, has been built on the coal and the water that we provided. I would love for people to flip the switch and this energy is coming from a renewable energy source, from the wind and from the sun. So I'd like to welcome everyone here this afternoon. Like today, what we have here is a historic moment for, for the community of Crown Point, especially the chapter, you know, where we're getting lecture from the sun. And it's a lot of clean, a lot of clean energy then, but it is. And I seen this morning that when they demonstrate this, the solar unit, I seen that electric uh, meter from cutting metal turning backwards. I wish I had one of those at my house. We're here celebrating New Dawn for the Navajo people because ever since the day before we had electricity or running water, we sustained ourselves off of the land and used the natural elements. And it seems like that's what we're starting off again and all the things that we have encountered with uranium mining and coal mining and all of the, it seems like today is it's just a happy day for us to 
to re reconcile again with Mother Earth and Father Sky to let them know that we we're starting off and we're living off of the land again using the natural elements of the sun uh, and the, the water that runs through our, our lands as power. And it's, that's just an, a, a remarkable thing for us. In the beginning, when we Navajo people came into this natural world, we made a covenant with our holy deities, stating that we will be stewards and take care of the land. So we need to begin to give back by offering to the earth, talking to the springs, talking to the wind, to the canyon, to the fire, to the sun, because that's what makes life complete. We've got one of the greatest alternative resources in the United States, in fact the world right here on the Navajo Nation, both wind, solar, probably the best in the country. I think there's a new economy that's happening on the Navajo Nation with this green economy. There's all the possibilities and the opportunities available out there, especially with manufacturing of solar and installation of solars, and then there's jobs created from all of that. All along's been sitting there waiting for us to use it. <laughs> and so the day comes when we, we finally have um, our lights and everything turned on utilizing the sun, and that's exciting. Something that was planted a few years ago, a seed that was planted, and we're seeing the growth of it. The first seedling, I, I would think, interpret it as the first seedling, and there's going to be many more of those that are going to be sprouting around the Navajo Nation, and that's exciting. The exciting part, I'd say, is um, learning how it works. Solar panels captures the electricity, turns it into power, and you can, you know, turn your light on. Also, there's a wind machine the same way too. And, uh, you know, just learning the, how it works, you know, it, it's exciting. Where we would actually create here uh, a solar power plant or an alternative energy power plant where the kids could not only learn how to deploy solar and wind and geothermal, but then we would gather that energy up, pump it into the grid and uh, they would learn how to manage a 21st century power plant in opposition to the coal or the nuclear power plants that are in existence now. With the Black Mesa Solar Project, right now we have 12,000 acres of land that has gone through reclamation. And those 12,000 acres can produce anywhere from 15 to 2,000 megawatts of solar potential. These transmission lines that go over Black Mesa are tied to Nevada, are tied to the state of California, which need to meet their renewable energy standard portfolio. And so that's for us with the Black Mesa Solar Project, we are looking at these lands like in the Black Mesa region where um, they have gone through 40 years of mining to utilize these lands for solar development, um, but also other sustainable economic projects, even solar manufacturing. The reason why we are taking a look at these reclamation lands is because there's existing infrastructure there. And also that these lands don't have to go through archaeological clearances. There also is existing transmission there. We see that as an opportunity to sell this electricity to these entities, but also to have electricity for our, ourselves. That's very important, is what, that we take care of ourselves first and be, be able to sell the excess to other communities. But we actually took it upon ourselves now to find these outside resources and to create the solar projects, wind projects, to know that you know, we don't have to be destroying Mother Earth to have a life here with electricity or running water. I would like to see our uh, political leaders transition to uh, renewable energy you know, to make a difference. Every sector in our economy has been supported in the early stages by the government.
So there's a real role for the government in supporting this transition to a clean energy economy. Currently, the rules are stacked against clean energy. Uh, there are incentives and subsidies for fossil fuels that make it hard to compete. Uh, they've been around for so long that it's actually going to take some organized people, some organized money, and better policies to actually drive us in the direction that we need to go. What's going on here today is a big step, major step. And I hope it has a ripple effect, domino effect, and that this will bring attention to the whole community and say this is what we need today in this community as well as the reservation. I think the next one is going to be in Tehachi chapter. So from there, they'll move on. So this is a, a good beginning. One of the big pieces in this project is to push for community benefits arrangements. So our people are having equity ownership, and our people are being trained, and our people are being put back to work. And so that's the model that we want to create so that it can be replicated throughout Indian country. Job security, energy security with solar. What I heard, you know, the sun's not going to die out for another five billion years, so, you know, we're pretty set with that. Solar and renewables is so important for our, our existence as humanity. We can no longer depend on coal or oil. These ways of thinking that um, we can just keep pumping and we can just keep mining, it's um, an old way of thinking. By honoring our ancient past of respect for nature and combining it with technology of the present and the future, we will lead our people and our country to a new era of prosperity and health. This is our gift to our people and to the world. In beauty it shall be. We need to rebuild. We need to start in every community rebuilding our energy systems, our food systems, our health care systems, our education systems. And it's already happening. Uh, it's coming from the bottom up, which is how every movement works. Uh, and um, we're winning.